flat pack, you can resuspend your pellets on an Eppendorf rack. So this is really helpful if you have bacterial cell pellets that you're resuspending as part of a mini prep, if you have precipitated nucleic acids as part of the purification protocol, various things like this. And so the sound of the Eppendorf xylophone is common in the lab. Works great if you have single tubes. But what if you have a lot of tubes? In this case, you can stick them in a rack, stick your hand tightly on top, and then vortex them side to side. Now, both of these are going to be great for kind of loosening things up and getting things, the pellet broken up into smaller pieces off the sides of the container, but there's probably still going to be some clumps. So what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to like triturate them, basically pipette up and down, up and down. And when you're, when, when you're doing this, it's really important to, one, prevent the um, bubble formation. So set your pipette to a lower volume than the amount of vo than the volume in here so you don't introduce air as well as you want to make sure that your pipette tip isn't actually touching the pellet. You want to be pipetting basically right above the pellet and give it kind of like a vortexing effect of liquid on top. So say you have a pellet in a tube, what you want to do is so you add the liquid, the amount that you want. Now I'm going to set my pet pipette lower than the amount that I added. And now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go and I'm going to pipette up and down, up and down, up and down on top of the pellet. Um, and so I'm not actually touching the pellet, so I don't get the pellet stuck on my tip. Um, if it gets stuck inside of the tip, what can happen is that you can then end up drawing up air um, and getting bubbles. And if you touch the, out, like, um, the outside of the tip, it can get stuck on here. You can also get pieces stuck inside. You're going to lose yield, you're going to lose pellet, and you're going to introduce bubbles. And so you want to just have like a vortexing effect where you're basically just mixing um, right above the pellet and you're making the air go, um, you're making the water give it kind of like a bath, a really fast like jet stream. And this is going to help you resuspend that pellet. It's going to be a lot easier to fully resuspend it, to homogenize it, make it all consistent if you started by doing something like the scraping or the vortexing. But then you still, with all of those techniques, you're going to want to go and make sure that everything is evenly distributed or homogenous. So you want to make sure it's homogenized and consistent throughout. And when you're doing all of this, try to minimize the bubble formation um, and be sure that if you're using a vortex, you have your hand tightly over the top.